Hi, I'm Les Thompson. I've just finished writing a book with an American woman, Paulette Conti. And she tells a story about what it was like to enter the hospital from hell, as they called it back in 1959, Chattahoochee in Florida. Now, a few inmates have told their stories, but this is the youngest victim ever. And she was totally innocent. She had no reason to be in this hospital because it was a mental hospital, but that's where her mother put her. And so she had to deal with first the ordeal of having been raped as a child and then coming to grips with where she was, surrounded by very disturbed women who wanted to tear her hair out, wanted to physically assault her and even kick her to death, which on one occasion they almost succeeded in doing. Now she's told her story for one reason. She's starting a campaign just to alert society generally because there are thousands of child sexual abuse cases these are the reported ones, reported to authorities in the U.S. alone each year. Now, I know there's a Royal Commission into Child Sexual Abuse going on in Australia, and, and that should help because people at least are able to explain what had happened to them. Because what usually happens is that, as in Paulette's case, the stepfather threatened her uh, if she told anybody what was going on until ultimately the rape occurred, and of course uh, it was obvious to everybody that a very serious crime had been committed but still nothing happened to him. As a result people in this situation as they're finding out in the Commission in Australia they are living in fear if they tell their parents or people in authority as to what's going on where they're being abused and then even after it all people find it very hard to believe that an innocent child can be treated in this way by a person that they trust or a person that the family trusts. Now in Paulette's case it's a little bit different because here she was thrust into this terrible environment, Chattahoochee, and of course the reforms took place afterwards but in 1959 people were dying, people were being abused inside the hospital, that is staff who were brutalizing the inmates. Uh, many of them didn't survive in fact, there are huge cemeteries out the back of Chattahoochee and it's where those people were buried because they were taken away and they were either heavily medicated or they were beaten. But what she tells about is what she saw. They were so horrific that even an adult would have trouble dealing with them. But let me tell you the most fascinating part of this, apart from the fact that she was in there for no good reason, that the doctors were, I guess, trying to do the right thing to get her to forget the ordeal of being raped as a child so they gave her shock treatments all they succeeded in doing was erasing her childhood memory or large parts of it at least but the fascinating thing about it is how could she survive well she tells the story in the book she found a cupboard because constantly the older women in the ward were trying to bash her tear her hair out and here she is a child, she found this cupboard which she could barely fit into, but she was able to fit into it, and the nurses allowed her to do so to protect her from the people who wanted to assault her inside that hospital. You should have seen that little cubby hole. I was just fitting there just right. And you know, uh, my birthday came in March, and that one nurse, she was so sweet. I wish I could remember her name. She had a cupcake with a candle, and she got me a transistor radio, and she wrapped it, and she says, put that up to your ear. I just loved it. I didn't have to hear that jibber-jabber, jibber-jabber, oh. Right, right. Or the screaming, or the yelling. And so there she was. And as a result of this, she was horrified, terrified. And so what she did was she invented a pretend person. It's what we would have called, I guess, a few years ago, a split personality. Now, she didn't know this. She was a child. She thought, oh, okay, I'm going to have a playmate, a pretend playmate, who will protect me. And that playmate did. The playmate took over so that she was able to survive. Oh, she, she hit people. Oh, the ones that try to hit me and pull my hair, even when it was small, my hair was so short, and they still try. And she would be right there and, oh, She'd take over. She'd punch them right back when they try to punch me. Yeah. And when I'm walking down the hall, I didn't have to worry. She was with me, you know. If anybody tried to do something to me, 
you know, she was there. She was finally released because she had a medical emergency after being beaten. So she tells the story for one reason. She wants to help other people. It's a very big problem for society. And it's not only that it happens, but it's also what happens afterwards as they grow into adulthood. She tells the story of what it's like, that she had this fear of going out because she had no one to protect her. If she, she heard people just talking to each other and it took her straight back as a flashback into that hospital ward where people were talking crazily about her behind her back. She had troubles getting education because the same thing happened at the school. They'd be innocent kids just being kids talking behind her and she was immediately transported back into the hospital and all the fears associated with that. And so she had flashbacks, she had many, many things. People also talk about, uh, okay, well, it's a long time ago, so why couldn't she get over it? Nobody believed her for so long because they didn't want to think that in an affluent country especially, this could have happened, but it did happen. And she explains exactly how and how she was over, able to overcome it to a certain extent by good fortune, meeting a very nice man, and they've been married for 50 years. But she explains what it was like for him as well, coping with her fears, coping with her irrational behavior, and also a second personality. Without Tony, I'm, I'd be dead. I can't see myself getting better. Thanks yeah. to Tony and thanks to God. I mean, I, I'm, and I think this book has really helped me a lot. It's all in the book and it has a happy ending. And thank God it does because this woman has really suffered so much. Her name is Paulette Conti. I wrote the book with her. It's called Nobody Believed Me and it's available on Amazon.com.